Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. I know I say that every time I create a video, but it seems to be the gracious thing to do. And I'm here today to color a picture from Intricate Ink Animals in Detail, Volume 5 by Tim Jeffs. Um, for years, my favorite artists were pretty much Hannah Carlson, Erie, and Maria Trollet. But I've, oh, and Pam Smart. I'm sorry, I can't leave Pam Smart out. But I started getting the Tim Jeffs Intricate Ink books when I first heard of them. And I've got all five. I have all of his PDFs and I have his lessons. So it makes me wonder with all the money that I've invested in his books, as well as the romantic, excuse me, the color, uh, Color in Heaven, um, Endangered Animals issue, if he indeed is my favorite artist. If not my favorite artist, one of the artists that I've invested the most in. Another artist that I've invested a lot in is Fabiano Atanasio, but I wanted to do this picture here today, and I only chose four pencils because it's grayscale. And four pencils will handle that should handle this frog pretty good. And I thought I would just go into it and uh, let you see what my interpretation of this frog would be. Now let's see what type of frog it is, by the way, because obviously there's different types of animals in every species. But we'll go to the table of contents. So I forgot to check to see what type of frog it is. I think it's on page 11. Yes, page 11 is the, oh, it's a toad. It's called the Harlequin Toad. So that's what we're going to be coloring, the Harlequin Toad. Obviously, I don't know my animal species quite well because I called it a frog. So I, I'm just using some binder clips to keep the book open. And that way I can lean it back against, I've got a smaller shelf on my desk and by hopefully uh, with this being a hardbound book and having the binder clips, I'll be able to just keep this, keep this in frame and open. So like I said, I chose four colors. I already sharpened them. I have an electric sharpener. It's a Link Yo Pro, which is no longer available on Amazon, but that's the one that I have. So let's, I'm going to do his, these spots on him in the, the yellow and the orange. Now I'm using the Tombow 1500s and they are not named and they are not numbered. Oh, actually they are. This is number four, 28. Okay. So if you have the Tombow 1500s and you want to try this, I'm using this one here for part, to start off the spots. So I am going to color in a spot. I'm going to color this whole spot and then I'm going to go over the darker part of the spot with orange. I will just do one first. I want to see if this lamp creates too much glare. Let's wait till the light, it, okay. I think it corrects appropriately enough. Um, Let's turn it to the lowest setting. Okay. Turn it to the lowest setting and give it a moment to correct. Let's see. I think that I need to invest in a ring light. Um, yeah, we're gonna shut that off. It's creating a shadow. Okay, so we will at some point get a ring light going on here so that I'm because I feel kind of feel like I'm working in the dark and I know that I'm not because it's it's daytime but it's not daylight it's pouring rain outside so what I have is uh, it's overcast here in Massachusetts so then I'm just going to go over this here with the orange now this is my very, very first time using these Tombow pencils. 
I only got the Tombow pencils because Joanne Warner or Joe Warner, I think it's Joe, J-O, Joe Warner on the Tim Jeff's Facebook group, which is the his Intricate Inks Facebook group, and some of his uh, tutorials, Joe uses these pencils quite a bit. And when Tim does his demonstrations, which I've seen a few times, on YouTube he also uses these Tombow pencils so I have two pictures selected from this book uh, excuse me from his work uh, one from this book and one from the endangered species color in heaven magazine so I thought for this uh, color and chat I would uh, color the, the toad see I almost called it a frog again I will color this toad and I will try to familiarize myself with these pencils to see why they like them so much. You know, I certainly don't need uh, t th these pencils because I have, I don't know, 20, 25 sets of pencils. I'm not even sure. Uh, two, four, six, seven, uh, yeah, about 25 sets. So I just got these because in the tutorials they use these. They also use the uh, Erotogen Dictionary pencils as well, which I kind of want, but I'm not paying the highway robbery that Amazon is charging right now because once the pandemic hit, prices went kind of through the roof. I'm just going to color, use the yellow in all the areas that I want to use yellow right now. Once the pandemic hit, uh, two things happened. The first thing that happened is a lot of things became unavailable on Amazon. And the second thing that happened was the things that did remain available started to be overpriced by third-party vendors. And if it's if it's sold and uh, shipped from Amazon, you, you get a really good chance at paying the normal price that you would expect to pay. To pay. But if it's an item that you that is sold by a third-party vendor, you are likely at this day and age, or should I say at this present time, to pay a bit more, if not a lot more, than what you would ordinarily pay. Now, back when I wanted the Tombow Erotogens, uh, I could I could have gotten all 90 of them for about 90 bucks, which would have been about a dollar a pencil, but if I were to look them up right now, I think each dictionary pack is thirty. It is like forty or fifty dollars, or even higher. So it would cost me closer to one fifty, at least on Amazon. Now I know there's Dick Blick, and I know there's Cult Pens, but I haven't looked there. But the reason I'm even discussing the Erotogens is because I, Joe and um, Tim Jeffs, uh, Joe Joe Warner and Tim Jeffs. Um, use those pencils as well um they use the luminances they use the polys so when i want to do work similar to theirs i would prefer to use the pencils that they use um i noticed that this is a very hard pencil um, i feel strain in my hand it may not be the pencil it could just be because i'm a heavy-handed colorist um so this pencil is a bit hard it's not very giving to the paper but at the same time, it's staying nice and sharp and crisp. Uh, I sharpened it before I started. And I will say that it's it's maintaining the point quite well. So I am, I am finding some satisfaction with this pencil. So I'm glad about that. Um, I'm a, I think I'm more used to softer pencils like Prismacolors and, and now the Artezas. I, I, I really like coloring with those. I absolutely love coloring with the luminances and i even colored with the uh color soft recently so this has a much different feel than some of those pencils um but i wanted to use them and i think okay we, we'll do this area near his stomach and then before i go on to the legs i will do his back I don't know why I'm holding the pencils. They could sit right there on my desk. 
I see my paper is oh I think I hit my camera at some point because it's quite crooked let's okay so let's uh, get this now I love these books and I use have used Prismacolors in this book in, in these books and I used a lot of mark, uh, permanent markers in these books now, I did start an image on live stream the day my daughter came home from the hospital, but I was really unhappy with what I did to, it was a lizard, a horned lizard, I think it was. I really don't like what I did to its back, so I haven't gone back to that picture. So, I chose three things to color from today. One was this, the other was an image um, I think it was a moose in the endangered species issue. And I also, I think I colored a little too hard with the yellow that time because now I feel like I'm scratching in a large area of orange. I think I put too much pressure on the yellow. So this, this section here is not coming out quite like I want. So as you see, my hand has moved down on the pencil because I'm really trying to put in some more color into this. So I think I just messed this little part up. Um, I chose uh, an image from the endangered species issue from The Color in Heaven. I chose this image and I chose a Jade Summer Intricate uh, Design coloring book. So I wasn't too sure what I was going to do in a coloring chat. And so I end up with this horned toad. So we'll just call this part done. And the next time I use yellow, like on the legs and so forth, I won't put so much uh, strength into the into the yellow. Now I said I was going to do his back, so I guess what I'll do is we're going to color in the lighter part of his back with the lighter green that I chose. As I showed you at the beginning, I only chose four pencils, so I'm mostly going to color this in, and then I'm going to use more of a flick. Uh, motion with the darker green on top and I'll show you what I mean in a moment so I just want to get this part done here and then I want to take the dot oh I'm sorry that was number six and I showed you number four was the yellow and for the orange it was number 28 let's wait there you go and it's a the way that it looks on camera, this looks like a dark yellow, but it is a deep orange. It's just looking weird on my computer. For the darker areas of green, this is more like a hunter green, and it's number 10. So now what I want to do is I want to, kind of like if I was doing fur, I, I'm going to try to go with the way I see the uh, the way the image looks in it and I know that it's it's an amphibian so it's more like scales but I and by the way there is a scales tutorial but I haven't taken it yet so I could be doing this wrong but I don't want to just color in this one I want to flick it up the way that I'm doing and then I will go with the lighter color that I already have here and I will try to blend it in. Providing these pencils blend and this is my first use of these pencils so they might not even bend, uh, blend. I'm not, I'm not even sure because I've never used them before. So I can't really flick here because this area that I'm doing is rather short and let's see how this goes. So I, I said a few moments ago that I started an image the day in a live stream, the day my daughter came home from the hospital. And for those who are new here, now I'm not even flicking, I'm just coloring, but I'm still staying within the way I see the image drawn. So I'll stay coloring like this. The, those that are new to my channel is my daughter just had her second child her name is Olivia Fay, F-A-Y-E. She was born on October 9th at one, excuse me, October 8th at 1 a.m. 
so she's just a few days old she actually had her first appointment today uh, a lot of times babies don't go to the doctor till they're maybe just a wee bit older but uh, Olivia lost close to seven ounces eight ounces when she was born so it's just a good way to check to make sure her weight gain is adequate um, so Ariana came home a day earlier she could have stayed at the hospital until yesterday which was Monday but she came home Sunday and she did call me when I was watching my uh, Kingdom Hall meeting them we don't call our church church we call it a Kingdom Hall um, our meeting was at on zoom at uh, it's from like from 10 to 12 on Sundays so she did message me or call me I think while I was watching my meeting and of course it's it's via zoom because of the pandemic so she called me on Tuesday uh, excuse me Sunday morning to say that they were being discharged and I forgot to call her after uh, my zoom meeting and so I sat down and I started to do a live stream and I heard knocking but I was I ignored the knocking because there's been some maintenance going on in my building and it, there's been a lot of sanding and a lot of uh, just a lot of maintenance type work so when she was knocking I assumed it was the maintenance guys so I ignored it and while I was talking on my second live stream ever she opens my office door and said oh you're just gonna ignore me so I jumped off of my live stream so I could meet Olivia and of course give Ariana a hug so they came home Sunday and today is Tuesday so they've only been home a day you know a little less than two days and I hate that they had to go out to the doctor today because it's pouring rain here in Massachusetts and um, I think they're going to head out over to uh, the daddy's the, you know her her boyfriend's house for a while so I don't think she'll be home anytime soon um, Olivia has a big brother his name is Demetrius he is 19 months old and he's been around babies before because he has two little cousins that uh, two boy cousins that he's been around and then his father's roommate is uh, a couple of his father's roommates are a married couple with a new baby so Demetrius understands kind of what a baby is but does he understand mommy and daddy have a baby and he's got to share mommy and daddy's love you know that's that's debatable because he's only 19 months old so uh he's quite happy with olivia and of course we have pictures but they're not ready to put uh, olivia on social media she's only been introduced to the world for 48 hours so or 72 hours so uh there's no pictures of, of demetrius and uh olivia floating out there at this point which is perfectly logical and perfectly fair so Demetrius uh, at first he wanted to touch her face and you know we're trying to teach him you know we don't touch baby's face and we don't touch baby's head and meanwhile I have two cats and where, where his dad lives where Demetrius spends a lot of time they have a dog so Demetrius knows how to touch softly because of the animals so once we told him he couldn't touch Olivia's face or head he immediately realized oh I just have to touch her softly so he just pats her stomach or her leg as if he fully understood it right away and it, it blows my mind because he's only 19 months old um, he's a very loving and a very happy boy and he's got mom and dad and they're not living in the same location so he gets a lot of time with his dad and then of course he, when he's here with his mom and his grandparents which is myself and my husband and so he hasn't had a moment to feel like second place he doesn't understand that he's been um, that his family has been added to to the point that he has to share he's just okay with it he's happy he's quite happy and it's a beautiful thing to see I, I absolutely love that you know I've been through that as a mom because uh, 
my oldest two are only 13 months apart and then my oldest four are five years apart altogether so they they all had you know to learn to share me and my husband when they were babies so it's it's just very sweet to see Demetrius being so loving towards Olivia uh, he hasn't cried he hasn't been overly demanding because he's got too many people to love him he's got myself and my husband on top of his mom and dad so he's got plenty plenty of adult attention and then he's got his aunties so he's he's a happy little baby now this time I didn't do the light color first and I, that's not an accident I just wanted to see if I could blend with it so that's why I did the light color afterwards for this little part right here and I kind of like I kind of like I did that I like how I did that I just went out of the line I just went on the black oh I did a jigsaw puzzle the other day let me show you I'm going to just lower my lamp. I hung it on my wall until my frame comes. Let's see if I can show you. This is the puzzle that I completed. It took less than one day. That is one of the fastest puzzles that I've ever done. Usually it takes, you know, with the multitude of hobbies that I have and the fact that I rest and the fact that there's a new baby in the house. I'm surprised that I did it in just a handful of hours. I worked on it briefly on camera to show how I set it up and then I went to bed. And then when I got up the next day, I had a session, I worked on it a while, then I laid back down for an hour or two. And then next time I sat down, I just stayed there until I finished it. So it's one of my quickest finishes. So I don't know why I jumped, why did I jump to my puzzle? I might have been thinking about Demetrius because when he's here, he likes to help me with my puzzles. So he's always got the attention when uh, from mother and father and from grandpa and grandma or nana and papa. Now my husband, he plays with his cars with my husband and he helps me with my puzzles. So he's got his, his activities with, with all of us. So he, he has not shown any kind of jealousy or insecurity because he's so loved. Everybody loves Baby D. He's so loved and he knows it and he's happy and he's well adjusted. Um, he's got, like I said, he's got aunties and cousins and babies around him. So he's really doing well with Olivia. Um, he'll be back when they come back from Mike, his dad's house. He'll be back here with, with us for the day and it'll be fun having him around because I, I love that little guy. So let me tell you about my time with Olivia. Um, I was a colossal fail last night with my daughter. She really needed to have some time to herself. So I said I would help her with Olivia and, um, but Olivia wanted to nurse. So she took after as soon as almost right after she brought Olivia in the room because she is pumping. She just didn't have any milk available at that moment. She came in my bedroom and got Olivia and proceeded to nurse her. And I, and I guess when she brought Olivia back to me, I had dozed off. But that's it's rainy right now and I have fibromyalgia. So rainy weather means sleep. And by the way. I said to Tony, my husband, I said, I'm going to try to make a video, but it's a good chance I'm going to go to bed. So with fibromyalgia and rain, I end up resting or sleeping far too much. So I was supposed to help with Olivia, not supposed to, but I really wanted to help with Olivia last night, but I kept dozing off. So I was, I was a colossal fail as a Nana last night. And so this morning I knew Olivia had an 815 appointment. So I'm, I'm always up early anyway. It doesn't matter how bad my day is. It always starts off early so that I can read. So, um, this morning, um, I was waiting for Ariana to wake up because I knew what time the baby's appointment was and she didn't quite get up. So I was able to go in there and get Olivia and she did have milk pumped for her so i was able to feed her and 
change her and spend a little nana time with her and that makes me just to say it makes me happy is an understatement it makes me giddy i i can't explain it and that's kind of um, excuse me one minute pencil shop at a time it's kind of like it is with uh one more time with demetrius is any time we spend together is it's just glorious so today was the first real well no when she came home Sunday and Monday, I spent time with Olivia, but today, this morning, was a lot of one-on-one -on -one time early this morning, and it was very enjoyable. Uh, she said Olivia didn't sleep much last night, and she didn't sleep at all this, excuse me, this whole morning that I had her, so at some point, she's going to be a very sleepy baby and take quite a long nap. So she's adorable. She, she um, I said to Ari, I said, uh, you and Mikey each have a doppelganger. I said, Demetrius looks just like Mikey. And um, Olivia looks just like Ari. And I mean, Ariana has the most beautiful freckles, my, my daughter. And uh, Olivia was born with her mommy's freckles. And I just absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Of course, Demetrius is as, is, is as cute as a button. But Olivia has freckles, and uh, she looks just like Ariana. And uh, Ariana was teasing me and said, Mommy, uh, uh, Olivia has Demetrius's pout. Well, I, I hadn't seen Olivia pout until this morning, and Ariana's exactly right. When she pouts, she has her brother's mouth. But other than that, she's, she's her mommy's little girl. She looks just like her mommy. Um, let's see what else oh what's going on um, let's talk about my reading my reading is on a slow ebb right now this is a, a last month got slow for me and this month it looks like it's gonna be even slower um, I read 53 books last month compared to 65 or 70 or 75 so my reading significantly dropped off in this past week it's been low too it's just been very very low and um, but I did listen to, uh, I am reading two historical fiction books. One is, is just, it's a historical fiction, but it's not based on the war. It's just based on the time period. And the other one where butterflies are free is based on what happens after the Jews were forced out of Poland. Either they were uh, exterminated or they were able to evacuate. And so the story, excuse me for reaching over, the story um, that I'm reading now is about a, a, a young woman, well, she started off as a young woman, a woman, um, no, i just tell you about the story. It starts off with a girl who's about 17 or 18, I, it didn't quite say how old she was, but her parents were trying to set her older sister Zorta up with a prospective husband but the girl liked um the man that the parents wanted to set her up with it was evident that they liked each other so eventually they got married and this quite naturally caused a rift with her older sister who was only a year older and i want to put a little i want to put green this little green here and a little light green right here okay um i just went on the black but we won't worry about that um so they get married her sister emigrates to the united states or flees to the united states and our main character um what is her name Sometimes when a book is written in first person, it's easy for me to forget the primary character's name because we're listening to the book in, um, in the character's voice and not. So I'm just going to Google it. I'm getting, as I'm trying to look it up, I'm getting like 17,000 notifications at once. Um... 
I want to say Lydia, but that's not Lydia because I just reviewed a book and, and the character's name was Lydia. So my brain wants to connect it to the book review that I wrote very early this morning. And her name is Miera, M-E-I-R-A. Well, she ends up marrying the boy that her parents wanted her sister to marry. And it was, it starts off in 1930s Poland, when, like near Warsaw. And eventually World War II goes into full, uh, you know, just full force. And she loses her husband and she loses her daughter. The husband was Avron, Avrom, A-V-R-O-M, who was the young man that the uh, parents chose for her older sister. Um, I'm not going to give any spoilers, and I'm not finished with the book, but I will say this, that tragedy ensues, and the book becomes tragic, um, and things begin to happen to the girl. Her name is, I want, I'm want i going to say Mira, M-E-I-R-A, so we'll just say Mira, and things happen to her, and her life takes on a different direction because of the effects of the war. Well, at this point in the in the story, she's uh, almost 40 years old, so the, the book takes place over years. Um, I had a hard time with the book because of the emotional aspect of it. Um, I was holding Olivia at the time, so I kind of appreciated the distraction of holding the baby because uh, some things happened in the book which would have made me bawl because I'm a very emotional person. But I think having the baby in my arms while I was reading gave me the opportunity to be distracted enough to not be overwhelmed by what happened in the story. So that's the, the book I'm reading now, Where Butterflies Are Free. The other book I'm reading is Where Hearts Go On, and that's, oh, sorry, Where Butterflies Are Free is written, I'm sorry, Where Butterflies Go is written by Deborah Doxer. The other historical fiction I'm reading is by Kate Hewitt, and it's a trilogy, and I think it's The Heart Will Go On. Um, I'm just going to go to my spreadsheet. I'm reading both of them at the same time. Well, not at the same time, but I'm currently reading two books. And the Kate Hewitt book I'm reading is, um, yes, The Heart Goes On. I said The Heart Will Go On. It's The Heart Goes On. The other two books is The Fragile Heart, and the third book is The Rebel Heart. These are reissues. I don't, couldn't tell you from the top of my head what they were originally released as, but when I write the book review, I will put the original titles. Um, but the book review will have the current book covers. Um, so I'm reading these two books by uh, two historical fiction. Obviously, the content is quite different. Um, and um, it's one of the genres that I used to read quite a bit of, but to be quite frank, um, World War II historical fiction is very hard on me emotionally. Um, it, I get very, very, very uh, drawn into the books that I read. And, and like I said, if I wasn't distracted with the baby between feeding her and holding her, and I probably would have cried at the traumatic thing that I'm sorry I think I lost my picture let me go back give me one moment please I think I hit the camera yes I did okay forgive me I'm not used to color in chats I'm not used to having to worry about the camera when I am coloring so that last maybe minute and a half you were off screen a little bit. I wish I knew about color correction um, because the greens that I chose for this toad look so much better in person than they do on camera. So anyway, um, I, I stopped selecting historical fiction books a while back. I just want to color in a little bit here, but I'm going to go over that with the dark green. And I'll do a little bit here and a little bit here. So um, I try not to choose too much historical fiction, but I will read maybe one or two a month 
and that's about it now. There was a point when I was reading five or six a month, but I find them to be a little, uh, I'm, I, they're just hard on me emotionally. Uh, they're always, the ones that I've chosen anyway, are always very well written, and you really, at least I do, get quite invested in the story. I'm going to move my book over a little bit because uh, I just want to turn my pencil a little bit sideways. I keep coloring on the black. If you see what I'm talking about, you see that green line? So I probably will take my eraser when I'm done and, and get rid of that. All of the images in Tim's books have this black background. And all of the images in his PDFs and in The Color in Heaven have a white background. So I just wanted to mention that. A couple more areas that I want to put the light green on this leg. And on this one here. So those are the historical fiction books I'm reading now. Again, I will... Well, actually, I'll tell you about another one in a moment. But it's... Where Butterflies Go, The Heart Goes On, and then I'm also going to read The Fragile Heart and The Rebel Heart. Those th three books with the word heart are from Kate Hewitt. I also read a Regency fiction, not really a romance. I mean, a, there was a romance in it, but it was more of historical Regency historical fiction. And that was A Light at Wincliffe by Sarah E. Ladd. I have to write the book review on that. That's a book I just read maybe three days ago. Um, so that's three historical, uh, that will be five historical fiction books that I have, uh, chosen for this particular week. It's a very slow week and I'm currently on book number, um, books number 16 and 17 for October. Now, today's date is the 13th, so by my general way of reading, I would be on book, if it's 13 days, I would be on book 26 for now, but I'm only on books uh, 16 and 17, so I'm quite behind according to what I read. So it, it doesn't, I won't, how can I say this? Everybody's reading is different, and to say I'm only on book 15 may seem a little facetious or a little crude because it's like, you know, there's still a lot of books, but yet it's not quite up to what I can usually do. But my reading has slowed down because of choosing different hobbies that I'm embarking on right now that I'm choosing to add to my repertoire, which includes what I'm doing right now, which is more coloring. And uh, I spent a lot of hours on my jigsaw puzzle. And I have another puzzle that's on my desk that I'll be working on. And I will show you that at some point in this video. I'll reach over and grab the box. Uh, it's an Anatolian puzzle. Um, I'm, I'm reading far less. Um, I'm not watching any more t TV than I usually do, but I'm online a little bit more than I, I was even a week to two weeks ago. So my reading has slowed down. Um, usually I read closer to 70 books a month, but I imagine this month it'll be in the range of maybe 45, 40 or 45 books for October, if I read that many for October. So after I go through all the dark spots on this part of the, our toad, I will go over it again with the lighter green. And remember, I, as I showed you, I only chose four um, four pencils for this picture. My lines are getting harsher and harsher. I'm coloring too hard. I gotta lighten up a little bit. Let me lighten up over here. See, I can color lighter. I can lift my pencil a little more than I than I did just in a couple areas there. Um, I think that if I were coloring with uh, Prismacolor or Luminance or Color Soft or an Arteza, I just throw out those. I think my coloring would be a wee bit different on this picture. Um, this Tombow pencil is causing me to really push in, especially when I want to blend. So. But that's okay because I love 
different brands of pencils and I like using different pencils in each picture. When I used to color on a regular basis, I used to um, rotate my pencils. Every picture was a different pencil set. So if I colored 10 pictures in a week, I never used the same pencil set for 10 different pictures. And I would rotate them and that way I would get my pencils were, were really being used. The only pencils that I didn't use a lot when I was being more consistent with coloring was um, my Color Soft and my Ink Tense. I wasn't using those a lot. And another pencils, uh, I wasn't using the, the Hero, Guang Chewy Hero pencils. I wasn't, um, I really, I want to color this little bit right here. Lighter color. Speaking of the banging that I thought that was um, the, the workers, I hear them working outside, so, I mean, in the front hallway. So if you hear banging intermittently, it's not coming from inside my apartment, but it is coming from right outside my, my door. So I was telling you about my reading. Um, I'm reading a little bit less. Um, as far as my schedule is concerned, I do a lot of blog tours, so Where Butterflies Go is the last October blog tour that book that I need to read. So any other books that I read for the next week and a half to two weeks is would just be net galley or print titles that I get from Forever or Grand Central Publishing. Um, I will be throwing in um, a Janet Ivanovich book and a couple. Um, I think it's Greg Hurwitz. I will be throwing in two of his books, which are not review titles, but they're on my uh, TBR that I've, uh, you know, set up for myself. But it's going to be a lower reading month. And while, I, because here's my, 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 my new agenda includes live streaming at least twice a week, hopefully going forward. Um, I do want to sharpen my uh, light green pencil again. Excuse me. I do want to live stream at least twice a week, and I'd like to do color and chats at least once a week. I would like to do puzzle and chats, which I've made a few, and I haven't gotten much feedback, so I won't do another one until I get a little bit more feedback. I do want to use thumbnails. Now I don't I do know that there's a couple recent videos up there without thumbnails, but I'd like to use really good thumbnails so that if somebody is subscribed to my channel and they don't want to uh, watch anything to do with jigsaw puzzles, the thumbnail will be clear enough for them. So if should they choose to bypass that video and wait for a reading a book review which by the way, I'll be making at least two book review videos today. Or will they want to see a wrap up or when my diamond paintings arrive, which one is coming tomorrow and the other one should be here within a week. Um, I, I do hope that my thumbnails will be clear enough so that uh, this one channel, Robin Loves Reading, can encompass my different hobbies, but the viewers can choose which ones they want to see. I've even thought of changing my the color scheme of my um I've even thought of changing the color scheme of my thumbnails to represent the different hobbies, but that's a little bit of work and I haven't quite I'm having a little hard time coloring that the way I want to. Um I don't know that I I'll, I'll follow through and, and change my color scheme. Um but as, as I'm trying to say, I, I'm taking a long way around to say that my different hobbies have uh, interrupted my reading schedule just a wee bit. But that's good, to be honest with you. And it's because it makes me more rounded out. Because when I'm reading 60 or 70 books a month, all I'm doing is reading, sleeping, and blogging. I'm not doing anything else. Yes, I'm watching YouTube channels, and I'm doing that while I'm multitasking, which of course I'm not multitasking right now, other than coloring and talking, but um, 
I'm enjoying being a little bit more well rounded out. And and like I, I said briefly, you know, I, I want I would like to like when I start my next puzzle, which by the way, let me show you what it is. It's this one here. I'll lift the camera. This is my, I have three Anatolian puzzles. This is Anatolian. I have three and I chose this one. It's it's going to be a little difficult because you've got all the brick and you've got this color is similar and the steps are similar color and you get the flowers and so forth. But I like the challenge. So that's going to be my next puzzle. But I'd like to work on puzzles while I chat with you. I'd like to work on my diamond paintings while I chat with you. And I'd like to color while I chat with you. Will I have enough to talk about is anybody's guess. Um, oh, as far as the diamond paintings are concerned, they are going to be handled by uh, unboxings first. And maybe kidding, if I'm saying it right. And I think... Kidding is when you you set it up like in my case if I wanted to use the cases or whatever so I've got to check out exactly what that is when people say that I'm doing I'm I don't know if even if it's even so I didn't color this properly I don't like the way this I'm going to color this like I'm going to try to color this in this way this little part right here did not come out right this little part of his leg. Um, so the diamond painting videos will be unboxing and me setting it up and then, uh, I guess they're called whip and chats. So that is going to be a part of my schedule going forward. Um, as far as these color and chats, I don't want them to be any more than 45 to 60 minutes. So that means if I don't finish an image, then I will finish it off camera. And it's currently 46 minutes. Um, but I, I want, I know that, you know, watch time is important, but I, at the same time, um, I'm not sure what color to do the tips of his feet. So I'm going to leave those blank until I, I look that up really quickly. Um, I, oh, if I don't finish a picture within 45 to 60 minutes, then I will finish it off camera. But this frog looks like other than the tips of his feet, which will be done off camera after I look them up. Um, and I think I should have did a little orange under here, but it is what it is. Um. You see how this is dark? I think this should have been orange right here. So let's let's make that happen. It's not going to come out quite orange because the green didn't all completely lift up. So we're just going to color in yellow and then orange on this little white area. Please forgive me. So. I don't think I've completed a thought in five minutes. I keep cutting myself off. So my agenda is whipping chats, unboxings, kidding up my diamond painting project, knowing me working on multiple diamond painting projects at one time on camera because I've got so many coming. I have 10 coming. Um, coloring chats like I'm doing right now, live streams, which is a little intimidating for me because I'm not the best colorist and I, I'm going to make mistakes and I don't, I, I, I'm nowhere, nowhere where I could be a tutorial type of a person. So the whipping chats might be a little less line art and a, and a little bit differently. Uh, I mean, the live streams might be just a little different. I have an idea, but we'll see. Now, I don't, because I don't have small children in my home often, because Demetrius just spends time at his dad's or whatever, um, I can do my, um, 
whipping chats in any any standard video pretty much any time that I want but just to make sure that there's no real interruption um, I will be doing the live streams when my husband is at work now I did let him know that I'm making a video now so he he won't like there's a bathroom in here that he generally uses but I know out of respect for the fact that I'm making a video should he need to make a pit stop he will use the front bathroom or the well this is the front bathroom he'll use the back bathroom um, so um, in consideration of his work schedule which is Tuesday Thursday Tuesday Wednesday and Friday he works full time just three days uh, like 12 hours each I mean he, it's still full time just three days a week if that makes any sense um, so Tuesday Wednesday and Friday are the days he works and those are the days that I hope to make my live streams um, I, I will work with existing streamers not work with them but I will take them into consideration so I can't say quite say what time I will be doing it on those three days but I want to make sure that people aren't live now I can't avoid it 100% of the time like if somebody streams quite a bit it might be hard to fit fit in around someone who's always on or if somebody streams every day it, it might be hard to work in but I'm going to do my best to work it in so that I'm not streaming over people and if I am streaming over people wait a minute I'm blocking you can't see what I'm doing if I am streaming over people then hopefully people can just decide where they want to go or use multiple devices like sometimes if uh, I'm watching two live streams I'll use my iPhone and my iPad or my I, Kindle and my laptop I mean I've got a million devices um, but I don't want to be bogarting anything that is already established so I, I do have to uh, kind of see what people are doing before I lock in times on the, those Tuesdays Wednesdays and Fridays I don't want to do you know stream over people if I can avoid it and sometimes it can't be avoided sometimes it's going to happen and I just you know YouTube is is open for everybody there's when none of us are getting paid cash dollars to stream so I don't have to worry worry too much about you know but like if it's let's say my friend Shaleen I would never want to stream while she's streaming. I just wouldn't want to do it. You know, that's just an example. I'm not going to say it's a favoritism thing. I'm just using that as a quick example. I do want to color this part here. And I think we're going to wrap up this video because we're, we're almost done with it other than the tips of the feed and the fact that the video is almost an hour. And I think that's plenty long enough for you to listen to me. I didn't fully talk about what I'm reading and I'm kind of glad because that leaves me t time to talk about that on my next video because I am reading other books and have other books lined up but we can leave that for my next video so we're going to wrap it up here I am going to look up to find out if this is a darker green or even an orange I'm really really not sure um, this here is dark so I think the green is appropriate but this here was light so I think the orange was appropriate I do want to look up what color to do the eyes and um, I'm just going to just kind of go under here a little orange I I want to figure out the eyes and I want to figure out um, the feet and I'll do that off of, off camera so we'll wrap it up here and call this my this is my second diamond uh, color in chat. Um, I like the way that it looks in my light. It's a little pale here, just like my hands are pale. Um, but it's the best that I can do right now. I do want to apologize for two things. Um, having a crooked picture sometimes and for not finishing my stories. 
I, I cut myself off and I changed the subject. So I wanted to apologize for those two things. But thank you for your time and I will be back with more soon. And until then, you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Stay well, stay, stay healthy and stay safe. And remember to social distance when you must be out in public. Bye-bye, everybody.